can see here's our mess right now. I've got my backhoe set up. <coughs> got the backhoe off the tractor right now. I have some pallets to return. Got a whole bunch of block ready to go. Got our forms, got some rebar sitting there, got our crushed stone. And over there we got a big hole. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I would appreciate if you could like and subscribe to let me know if people are watching and enjoying the videos. Julian and I have a very cool project announcement for this summer. We're currently working on an addition to the house. You can see on the engineering render, it's going to be a three car garage on the bottom and the upstairs will be a living space. Hopefully I can keep up with some videos to follow along with this project. We've been planning this addition since we bought the house, but with the time constraints of the house rentals, we decided to hold off. At the beginning of March, dad came up with the saw and cut down the cedars beside the house. So you can see there, I'm just hopping on the tractor. Dad already has one of the trees down with the chain hooked up to it. So he's just gonna hook it onto the back of the tractor. What we're trying to do here, we're gonna skid the tree uh, off of the yard out to the end of the field. That way we could delimb the tree and put all the limbs in a, a pile. This is gonna leave the tree trunk, uh, which are pretty straight. The centers are rotten out of them. We tried to cut off as much as we could um, out of the rotten stuff and leave whatever was solid. Hopefully we can have a sawmill come into the farm this summer and we can cut up these cedars into some posts. Uh, I got a few plans, uh, different ideas where we can use these uh, on the project. And there you can see the size of the tree. That's where we're going to leave them out in the field. It's a good size. Uh, that one there must be about 35 feet tall. Uh, no problem for the tractor. It has the chains on it. That one I had to put into four wheel drive uh, to get a good bite. So we're moving them now. Uh, when the ground's still frozen, so we're not uh, tearing up the lawn. So to get started for the new addition, we have to start with a permit. Um, and the only thing holding up our permit was to get our septic system checked out. So with the addition, because we're expanding on bedrooms and adding fixtures because we'll add a bathroom in it, um, that is why they have to clear our septic system to do the addition because it would have to be able to handle the capacity of potentially having more people with the added on space. All right, so good news with the septic system, all is good. It's of good size, it's in good shape. So after that, all we had to do is contact the township office. They issued a permit off of our drawings. They were happy with that. Uh, so the layout is starting. Here I am pounding a steel post in the ground. This would be the second corner off of the house. I got the third and fourth corner. Uh, we're working on that right now laying that out so that's just some measuring uh, following the blueprints measure corner to corner to make sure everything is sitting there square this is laying everything out for the excavation so right now we're above grade we got to put the footing in below the frost line what that means is we have to make sure this building is below the freezing point of the ground so when the winter comes around the ground starts to freeze we want to make sure we're below that. If not, that freezing will push the foundation of the house. It'll shift it. It'll move it. We definitely don't want that. So again, just getting the layout done, figuring out how we're going to excavate. And you will see in the next step what we're going to do once we dig a hole. Hey guys, thanks for tuning back in. It's been a pretty busy week. Got lots done. Promised on this build I would... Uh, try to do some more filming to keep track of what we're doing. Of course, uh, by the looks of the last, uh, the last clip to this clip, we're probably uh, quite a bit farther than uh, we should be for, uh, I should have kept up with my filming here. Anyway, this is where we're at. We got, uh, got ourselves a hole dug. We were pretty fortunate. Uh, we had a, the neighbor was working on the property line with his big excavator, so he came over and we got the topsoil off. And then I was able to use the doits with uh, the backhoe, which is sitting over in the driveway right now. Uh, I was able to use that to dig out the footing area. Uh, once we got the footing dug, got uh, the crushed stone over behind the, the laser level tripod sitting there. We got some 7 h crushed stone that uh, we put in the bottom. The tractor's looking pretty good and pretty happy with that. So we 
used the tractor to drive everything over, made a little ramp. Made a ramp uh, into the area so I was able to drive across and place all the gravel. Ended up picking up this uh, this compactor. Works really well actually. I was quite surprised. Uh, that uh, Canadian tire. Anyway, save, uh, save some rentals with, uh, with the craziness going on right now. Um, rentals are closed or limited, harder to get, so I thought we'd pick up our own uh, plate packer. So, uh, Jill's been out a couple nights running it, packing, the, uh, packing all the gravel here. Jill's been a big help. Uh, it's pretty easy for her to run uh, around, the, around the footing there and pack all the gravel. So as you can see right now, I'm getting the forms set up. It's all the uh, 10 inch form, or uh, sorry, the, the footing is 10 inches deep, 24 inches wide. Uh, and pack full of rebar, which is the next step, but just uh, I got a string line down there, I got some uh, some stakes in my corners, just uh, getting everything set up. Like I say, I got the laser level over on the tripod over there. It was a busy day. Got all the forms installed. Got all the stakes in. Got all the cross bracing in. Next step, we got to get all the rebar installed. To get around these corners, we got to bend it 90 degrees. My dad's come up with a genius idea using the tractor. A little bit of redneck engineering. Today's a good day. The sun coming out. Rained a little bit last night. We are pouring footings today. All the lead bars in, spaced up. All the forms are in. Uh, they're all staked down. We did some dirt last night. Hopefully, we get the cement truck as far around as we can. See some digging. We we'll get the tractor out. The ground's, uh, the ground's wet. Not really soft. It's just wet. I'm gonna get the get the tractor going. Give us a couple more runs now that it. Uh, that it's damp on top. Hopefully, we're packing a little bit more. I know those uh, not only sled trucks are uh, definitely not light. Get a uh, small gravel pile there off to uh, spread around. I put a little bit of uh, crushed stone on this pathway. And then the truck will back in on the driveway, cover that whole front wall. You can back down here, cover the whole side. And I'm hoping uh, we'll see if we can squeeze in along this back wall. So hopefully, we only have the far corner, far back all over there to, um, uh, to, to get some concrete into, so we use the wheelbarrow for that, so that's looking good, the old Deutsch worked out with the back of it, moved, uh, literally moved the mountain yesterday with it, out in the dirt, moved, uh, moved a big pile anyway to get, to get through. Here we are, all ready to go to pour the footing. Jillian was able to take a pretty cool time lapse. Dad was able to come up. My grandfather was able to help out, and Buckwheat uh, was off as well to uh, to help out. So the plan didn't work to get the truck around. We ended up having to use the wheelbarrow for a lot of it. But uh, all said and done, we got nine yards in the footing. Um, took about an hour to do. So you can see here, Dad and I running the wheelbarrow. Buckwheat was running uh, the shovel. Uh, my grandfather, he was going around to uh, travel it out. So, anyway, thanks for tuning in. Um, this is just the start. Hopefully, there's a lot of videos to follow. Well, that's cool. Getting ready to pour the foundation, and the Canadian snowbirds are flying over. <laughs>